This afternoon, I am your PRM, Damien Schmidt, and I am facilitating this workshop with my one of my team members uh, and great friend. We've become friends over the past couple of months, uh, none other than DTM Shirley Daly. I wanted to give her a big warm welcome uh, and round of applause. Today, our workshop is entitled Bringing the Toastmasters Brand to Life. Uh, and the idea is that we really take, uh, take what we learned from the brand manual. I sent out the email with a link to the brand manual for those of you who didn't know where to find it. Uh, link to the brand manual uh, and some other uh, Toastmasters branding resources so that we'll be able to get familiar. Now, this workshop really takes us from just being able to read and understand some stuff in a document to really putting it into practice and getting a better understanding of what uh, toast, our Toastmasters branding would look like. One of the things that we focus on, especially in this workshop, is going to be very practical, very hands-on. So expect to have your mics unmuted. Uh, one of the things that we focus on here is learning what the brand man learn, bringing that brand manual to life, as I, as I was mentioning. And one of the areas that we really spend time on is the flyers, because uh, especially as district leaders, that's one of the areas where I believe we really interact with the brand on a constant basis. Uh, of course, there's a bunch of other things, you know, virtual backgrounds and those type of things. Uh, but for uh, on a weekly basis where we have to conjure up our creativity, uh, the flyers are the one area where I think all of us um, have to emphasize on and have to put energy on. So that's one of the areas that we're gonna be spending time on today. Just before we begin, I want to take a moment to recognize some of the district leaders in the chat, the executives uh, who will be here, either they're on the call already or will be joining the call. So I want to just take a moment to establish that protocol. I'm not seeing anyone from the executive in the chat as yet, but I did get confirmation from them that they will be here. Oh, yes, I see uh, Toastmaster Pierre Agnant, our finance manager, I want to welcome you. And thought I saw Elsa as well. Oh, no. uh, so I want to welcome them. I know they'll be jumping in uh, as well throughout the day. I know that there's also some other COT trainings that have started uh, as of this weekend. Uh, so I know that some persons were not able to join because of that. Uh, and again, that's another reason why we'll be recording this session so that we'll be able to share this with you um, and share this with them actually. Uh, this training is also actually put together for my PRM assistants and my PRM team to ensure that they are also trained. Uh, one of the, and we'll get, we'll touch a base on that later. One of the main ideas why we wanted to do this training so early uh, in the year is to make sure that you as district, le uh, sorry, district leaders, division leaders, area directors, you're also able to introduce a branding element to your COT trainings. Uh, and even if you miss the COT trainings, it's something that you can introduce throughout the rest of the year. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we, that, so that's why we wanted to make sure that we introduced this from here already, uh, so early in the year. With that out of the way, I want to welcome Shirley. Uh, Shirley, thank you for being here this afternoon and sharing this platform with me. Uh, Shirley will be the one uh, giving a lot of the, we'll be sharing and going back and forth on the presentation. So I'm very happy that she, she's here. This is a presentation that we actually started giving since last year uh, with our in our Division I. And so we're very happy to be able to expand that into this platform as well. Great. One of the first sessions, we'll start off the sessions with a interactive moment. Uh, and so feel free to 
unmute your mics uh, and share with me your ideas on which logo you think this company is. The top left. Uh, feel free to unmute your mics or put it in a group chat. Google. Uh, That's Google. Google. Very good. Uh, this one on the right hand corner. Amazon. 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 Okay. This one might be a bit more difficult Apple. in the middle. Apple. 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 <laughs> I think we made it too easy for them this this time. <laughs> and down here in the Samsung. bottom. Samsung. 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 Okay. okay. Yes. And the hardest one of them all. Coca Cola. Coca -Cola. Coca -Cola. <laughs> Very good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I thought we would have had to we would have had to be breaking some brains, but apparently we didn't. This afternoon, as I mentioned, at the end of the session, we expect our our participants, you, uh, this is, again, this training is for area leader, area directors, division leaders, and even uh, district leaders, where we want to raise the level of brand compliance within District 81 for this Toastmaster year. Uh, we also want to ensure that you be able to use the knowledge and information that you get from this training in all your communications throughout your Toastmaster year. Uh, again, we want to make sure that we inform you and train you from uh, early in the year so that you'll be able to pass this on to your uh, fellow colleagues uh, and those who work with you. We also want to take another moment to explore the brand, understand the fronts, the colors, the images, the logo, uh, and any other marketing material that you may have. Again, thinking specifically about the flyers. We also want to develop you and your role as the ambassador of the brand. One of the responsibilities of the PRM, my responsibility, is to police the brand. So when I see things going out of whack and persons being non-compliant, I come through with my uh, disciplinary uh, tools <laughs> uh, and to discipline you. But in this case, uh, we want to more use precautionary measures uh, and inform you of what the rules are so that you'll be able to implement those uh, in advance, yeah? And of course, be able to create ambassadors in you so that you are also in turn able to help us all com uh, be remain compliant. And lastly, we want to be able to share the knowledge and tools with other district leaders, as I mentioned, yeah? So if you're a division director, I expect you to share this with your area directors. If you're area director, I expect you to share this with your club officers, et cetera, et cetera. Content, in terms of what's in store for us today, we will discuss what a brand is. We'll talk a bit about a model that I designed a few years ago called the Love Cue. Shirley will also take you into how to bring the Toastmasters brand to life, discussing the colors, fonts, uh, and more. We'll also touch on some don'ts and do's, uh, and we'll touch on some good examples of some good and bad flyers. Again, really making it practical. And I just want to touch here from, uh, mention from here that the idea of looking at these flyers is not to uh, shame anybody or put anybody out there but it's really just to ensure that we're all able to learn from each other, yeah? Uh, lastly, we'll do some practical exercises and that includes a challenge. Uh, and that challenge is how do we make a flyer, a compliant flyer actually uh, in 10 minutes. Uh, and lastly, we'll go through some resources just before we close. We expect to be finished by uh, roughly 5.30. I prefer to have all the questions at the end of the presentation, just so that we are able to get through the content and share that with you. Remember, it's being recorded. Uh, and so that we are able to handle all your questions at the end when we have more time for it. Yeah. Shirley, thank thanks you again for being much. here. It's all yours. I'll be your <laughs> clicker for today. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. And it is a joy to be here this afternoon. I, 
I'm sure it is nice warm weather for many of us since we're in the Caribbean. And I want to extend my own welcome to everybody on the platform. I also would love us to begin our level of compliance. And I had put it in the chat, but just in case you didn't see it, I'm asking you to rename yourself. If you're an area director, the area director first, the number, the area, in terms of the area and your name. And if not, whatever is your other ta your title, and then your name, so that we will know who are the persons here, as well as get to know each other, just from the interaction which will take place. We also want to, and I believe Toastmaster Schmidt, he did that already, our public relations manager, to welcome everybody on board. We saw our program quality director, Toastmaster Pierre, distinguished Toastmaster Pierre Charles Mignon. Are you there, sir? I don't know, I saw a shift and I, is he, is he still on? Sir, um, Toastmaster Schmidt, is he still on? I did see him pop in, but it looks like he popped back out. Okay, yes. All right. And I, I wanted to have said this while he was there to let him know that we are aware of what's happening in Haiti and uh, to assure him that he has our prayers and that they are in our thoughts. All right. Thank you again. I noticed that right now we have 37 persons, which means it's 35 other than Toastmaster Schmidt and myself. And that's, that's not bad. How many, can anybody put in the chat, how many areas we have in District 81? Somebody says 49, somebody says 56. Any, any other answers? Which one is right? 56 or 40? 50. 56. 56. I think okay. The 56, yeah. Toastmaster, yes. All right, yes. And uh, I know one of the reasons the 56 answer was right was that Toastmaster Graham is the new she's a new division director because division b has now been split in two and yes it's 56 areas wonderful branding what is a brand anybody can tell us would you like to write some in the chat something in the chat toastmaster our program our Public relations manager, he will monitor for me in the meantime. Anybody? I, a brand is how you want your organization or company to be recognized. So for instance, what was done initially, Coca-Cola, Apple, that's a brand. Very good. Yes. Division H director, madam, thank you very much. Basically, anything anybody else would like to add? One more thing. I think a brand helps to define who you are in terms of who you represent. And so you try to live up to that expectation, that brand, not wanting to spoil it or she, it, you know, make any other changes to it. Good. Who you are, you're recognized for who you are as well. And how people see you, very important. How you see yourself and how other persons see you, that's part of it. And as we go along, I'm sure those kinds of characteristics will unfold. Thank you so much for your contribution. Yes, sir. You may continue. And yes, sir, you can continue. <laughs> so there you have it. One of the things that make up a brand is a logo. As you saw the Coca-Cola lower, even half of it, you were able to recognize it, even that piece. So you see the power in a logo. You have a tagline making up a brand. Yes, what is the Toastmasters tagline? Write it or shout it, it's okay. The leaders. leaders are made. There you go, there you go. And ladies, gentlemen, it's very important that we know that. And as part of the consistency, which that's a word you're gonna hear throughout, 
we did just, that's all Toastmasters wants you to use, that tagline. All right, whatever you write, that is the tagline. Nothing else should trump it, where leaders are made. And it, okay. And then as, as part of our brand, your vision, your mission statement. What's the mission of the district? Anybody knows? To build club and retain the ones you already have. Okay. Build new clubs and build new clubs and support put existing clubs. clubs in achieving excellence. Correct. Beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful, you have the essence and that is good. You think you're gonna, when you take it to the next level, you're gonna learn it by heart. A brand is a product. So we have logo, tagline, vision, slash mission statement, a product, visual, identity. And you, you can see the brand coming out on the website, brochure, business card. As you pick up these things, you know which brand or which company rather the brand is associated with. Wonderful, thank you. A brand is a set of rules, the feelings and emotions it evokes. When you hear Nike, right away you think of the field, they are out there. Yes, you want a, a sneakers, you want a running shoe. Yeah, the feeling, and of course, you know, the product line has been extended to church and all kinds of things. But see, there, a feeling is associated with it. There, I have a special feeling when I hear Toastmasters. Yes, the best in public speaking or in communication. And therefore, I have to make sure that I represent my brand well. Uh, can somebody read that one for me? You can say a brand is? Brand is a widely held. Okay, sir, Toastmaster Dominic, you're on. Please go ahead, loud and clear. Oh, yes, uh, my apologies. Good afternoon to Toastmasters. Somebody, um, Division D, we're going to ask you to mute. Ladies, gentlemen, please mute if you're not speaking. Go ahead, Toastmaster Dominic. Yes. A brand is a widely held set of beliefs and expectations <laughs> about what you deliver and how you deliver it. Beautiful. Beautiful what you deliver and how you deliver it, the expectations. Thank you. A widely held set of beliefs and expectations about what you deliver and how you deliver. And you see that in Toastmasters. That's very important, how you deliver. The Toastmasters product is very important. And we're going to be, as you hear us go along, you will see that that takes on significance. Thank you. A trusted brand attracts clients who share common values and beliefs. What are some of the common values in Toastmasters? Excellence. Excellence. Thank you. Integrity. Integrity. And I see service in the chat. What else? Respect. Respect. Yes, those are, the, I hear the four core values, excellence, integrity, respect, service, excellence, rise, no, 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 I'm so happy that is in the chat, the Toastmasters has an order in which it represents the core values, and many of us have been using that rise because we love abbreviations and we love acronyms, and that is not accepted in Toastmasters. Today, we're just going to call it this a straight talk workshop. So the first one is integrity, integrity, followed by respect, service, and excellence. So no rise. It is not to be written with R-I-S-E. Please remember, consistent message. That's one of the things that's important. When you hear Toastmasters, the words quality and consistency, those words read in the same sentence. And a consistent message says that as a part of our brand, our core values are to only be stated with integrity because that drives the rest. So it's integrity, respect, service, and excellence. That's the order, so a particular order. Lovely, yes? That's a common belief. 
Mm -hmm. Please continue, sir. So according to Toastmasters, may I have a volunteer reading that for me? Division Director yes, D. Master, Hello, Shelly. Yes. And even if you have your camera is not on, you know, please focus because the elders will be calling on you. Uh -oh. <laughs> I just tried to take notes, but I'm okay. I'm sorry? I said that I tried to take notes because I just um, felt that I have to learn something new when it comes okay. to the core values that we have. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not hearing you clearly. Oh, sorry. All right, so apparently something is wrong with your mic. We will excuse you. It's about for AD30, my name's it. A brand is an exclusive and desirable idea embodied in products, places, services, people, and experiences. A brand is an exclusive, thank you, and desirable idea embodied in products, places, services, people, and experiences. All right. Now, what is the product that we have to offer in Toastmasters? Communication and leadership. Communication and leadership. Where is, does it take place? Everywhere, every time. Everywhere, every time. And it starts where? In the formal sense. The word begins with C. Your club. There you go. In the clubs. That's the place. The services. What are some of the services we offer when we are in club meetings, when we are in training? What are those that we offer? Evaluation. One of them, pardon me? Evaluation. Fabulous. Anything else? Mentoring. Beautiful. Yes, love it. Thank you. Guys, you're on the ball. Anything else? Education. Education. And I love that because one of the things we must remember is that Toastmasters International is an education organization. Yes, that's the core. And out of the education now is when you learn or enhance your communication and leadership skill. We also offer a variety of training. Yes. And uh, what about the people? What do we do with them? How do we treat them? Show respect to them. Show respect to them. Support them. We support them. Yes, we empower them. What else? We coach them. We coach them. We we coach them. them. Wonderful. And I want us to always remember that that's part of our brand. Uh, honestly, arguably, nowhere else in the world does it like we do. Seriously especially if we are doing it right. Give them feedback and coach them, yes? What are some of the experiences we have as it relates to our brand? Have fun. We have fun big time. AD45, yes, sir. Have fun. It helps to some of the experiences we have is that the, the, the atmosphere, all the things that we do together helps to develop self-confidence. Remember, for those of you who have been to the club officer training and we were talking about leading the club to success and we looked at the Toastmasters hierarchy of needs, somebody call it the Toastmasters edition of the hierarchy of needs. One of the basic thing is that people fear public speaking. But by the time you get to the top, and as you make the journey to, towards self-actualization, you overcome that fear. And so you become a confident speaker. Change our paradigm related to the way we see life and others. Fantastic. Who you become. I love that part of the experience for me. When you take the Toastmasters journey, who you become. 
whom you become. Fantastic. And so it's not just about doing the speeches or performing the leadership role, but your professional, your personal development, whom you become. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for being gracious. I would love to take on the next point. What the Toastmasters brand does connects by the look, feel, and the message. And we saw all of that coming out in our discussion just a while ago. It bonds, it positions the safe, supportive environment. That is what is our USP, unique selling proposition. That's what that the, our brand does, provides that safe, supportive environment. And as you hear later from Toastmaster Schmidt, uh, our public relations manager, you'll hear about that love cue. But that supportive environment is so important. And that is why we kind of refrain from using the word criticize because it has a negative connotation and we want to use the word giving feedback. That's what we want to use because the environment in which we are doing this is safe and supportive. What the Toastmasters brand does is it makes consistent the message. Anywhere you go in the world and you are in a Toastmasters club, there are going to be some basic things that are common to the experience and common to the club when you see the logo, you, you see how feedback is done. You see how speeches are done. All of those are part of our branding, but it's consistent. Okay. Why do we brand? People have too many choices and too little time. Not to mention in our era now where everything is online, social media, a lot of distraction. Everything is moving fast. And everybody's advertising, and but you need to come out as unique. You need to differentiate yourself. Most offerings have similar quality and features, and we tend to base our buying choices on trust. Is the Toastmasters trust? Is the Toastmasters brand about trust? And so there you go. Why do we brand? Can anybody say them for me, please? Can I unmute? You know, I'd love to hear you. Appreciate, communicate yes. effectively, get your message across, and tell your story. I'd like a male to read that as well. Why do we brand? Thank you. Differentiate, communicate effectively, get your message across, and tell your story. All right, wonderful. May I see the hands in the chat if you believe that's the reason we brand? Lovely, there you go. Wonderful. Welcome, Madam Era Rector 12. I like you, I, I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Lovely. And now the love for brands and some more. And I'm going to ask our public relations manager to take it from here. Very much, Shirley. Thank you very much. You're doing a wonderful job so far. Uh, and Thank you, sir. Bless I feel, you. I feel honored to just be able to sit back and know that the, the team here is in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this afternoon, at this point, we're going to jump into just, we just wanted to share some of the brands that we all know and love. Uh, some maybe you didn't realize was a brand, uh, some that we sometimes maybe we don't even think about or consider. Uh, some of those, for example, would be McDonald's. I think we all recognize McDonald's. Uh, anybody recognizes this one? Uh, especially some- Instagram. I was just gonna say, let some of the old, the, the more mature persons in the room guess, but glad to know. Uh, Starbucks, I think we all recognize Starbucks. We hear about Starbucks, etc. Forever 21, young ladies, uh, especially here in the Caribbean, flying into to, to the US and Miami to go and shop. Yes, sir. Yeah. The older I'm ones were fun time, you know. The I older the ones were fun time. The first time I went to that store was in San Antonio in 2002 at the Toastmasters International Convention. 2002, <laughs> that was the second convention I was going to. And I went to a four into a Forever 21 and I have never forgotten it. Every time I still go there, 
Guys, please. I'm still young, forever, 21. <laughs> <laughs> hey, glad to hear, glad to hear. Uh, some of the, the gentlemen and, and actually some of the females too might recognize the Harley Davidson logo is also one of the top some is one of the top brands. Uh, this one in blue, kind of small, but has taken over the world, especially in the past five, 10 years, Facebook. Uh, today, we also see the importance and the value in Walt Disney. Uh, and nowadays, I lived in the Netherlands for a few years, uh, and you cannot move from a new house to an old house, or for, sorry, from an old house to a new house. You can't get any furniture without considering at least the offerings that IKEA has. These are some of the top, top brands. Uh, and uh, later on in the presentation, we'll get to, we'll get to some more, but we just kind of wanted to pause to make sure that you all uh, kind of get a good idea of where we're at with brands and, and kind of where we want to go and also show the relevance of why these brands are so important. Yeah. We all recognize these brands in some way, shape or form. We all have some sort of connection, uh, some sort of memory to these brands as Toastmaster Shirley mentioned. She re still remembers her first time in a Forever 21 store. But how do we get there? How do we get to a point where people are in love with our brands? Uh, and by extension, I want you also to think about how do we get to a point where people are in love with our club? Your club also, even though you use the Toastmasters logo, your club still has its own brand. Because remember, we mentioned since in the beginning that the brand is not just a logo. The brand is not just a tagline. The brand is also the emotions that are maintained. Uh, I could tell you from experience, one of the, the major points that I hear from my home club, the Cooper Koi Sunset uh, Club here in St. Martin, is that we, they always, when persons come to visit, they always recognize and remember the feelings and emotions and experiences that they have from the beginning. So a few years ago, I designed the Love Q. The Love Q is a model that explains how persons fall in love with your brand. And in this case, how they fall in love with your club. Love Q has five different stages. We have the initial meeting. So this is where you come in contact with the brand or your club for the first time, or maybe they were invited, maybe they heard about it from a friend, maybe they saw a flyer on your WhatsApp status or on your Instagram page or on your Facebook. Uh, and then once they understand and meet the brand for the first time, they fall into the aha phase. The aha phase is basically where you recognize that, hey, this is a brand that, or a club that may meet my interests, my personal interests. Once you recognize, you reach to the block. And the blocks is where you deal with all the different uh, obstacles, hindrances that may stop you from experiencing the brand fully. For example, uh, Shirley loves Forever 21, but she may or may not have a, a Forever 21 close by on her island in her area. So even though she loves the brand or has positive emotions towards the brand, uh, the brand is not necessarily accessible to her in that point, at that point. One day, Shirley may move towards, uh, move closer to San Antonio or Miami or in the US, wherever there's a tw uh, Forever 21, and that makes it more accessible for her to experience the brand, the brand in its entirety. So then she's able to enjoy the full experience of uh, the love queue. However, after a while, Shirley maybe gets a bit older. Uh, the, sto the things that uh, for every 21 sells, uh, she doesn't necessarily want to wear anymore. 
or her taste change for whatever reason. Uh, she maybe want to wear more or less revealing things than what uh, Forever 21 provides. Uh, so her taste change or the, the taste of Forever 21 themselves also change. Uh, so there becomes a dip where Shirley now falls out of love with the brand. Persons may be coming to your club, they may be going through whatever it is they're going through, uh, and then they realize that, hey, after a while, you know, this club doesn't provide, doesn't meet my needs anymore for whatever reason, yeah? Uh, and then they fall out of love with the brand. To put it into context a bit more, uh, according to Toastmasters, a brand is an ex exclusive and desirable idea embodied in products, places, services, people, and experiences. Uh, again, just to recap what we mentioned before. We also wanted to be sure to highlight that a few years ago, uh, and remind everyone, a few years ago, Toastmasters updated their brand, uh, updated the look and feel, not just of the logo. I just want to stress on that a bit more. Uh, remember, the brand is not just the logo, so it's not just updating the logo. Uh, they updated all their documents. They updated uh, the colors that they use. They updated how the documents look and feel uh, to try to evoke those certain emotions, trying to maintain and speak to those emotions that uh, persons may have towards Toastmasters. Again, trying to make sure that they complete uh, and speak to the love queue, uh, speak to all those phases in the love queue. Now I'll call back Shirley to the virtual lectern for her to uh, speak more about how do we bring the Toastmasters brand to life, especially in our flyers, videos, and other marketing material. Thank you so much, Mr. Public Relations Manager for that proper overview. And I love the love cue. So ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, you, fellow leaders, you see that you can come up with a, a nice concept. And there it was, the love cue experience that came from our public relations manager. Let's give him a round of applause for that innovation. Love it, love it, love it. And we we'll always remember why we love brands and how did we get there. All right, so we're gonna look at some of our flyers, videos, other marketing material and our image in Toastmasters. How do we bring that to life? Please go ahead, sir. And uh, you know, I want to ask somebody to read for me, Toastmasters branding standards, quality, high quality, high standards. That's what Toastmasters is about. Yes, so to, um, our era director 38, you wanna read for us, Toastmaster Richards? Thank you, facilitator Toastmaster Shirley. Toastmasters branding standards will help us to communicate one consistent Toastmasters identity that is recognizable wherever we may be and accurately symbolizes the benefits of this great organization of which we are all proud to be a part. Thank That's you. That's Toastmasters brand manual. That's right, thank you. And I'm going to ask you each to take 15 seconds and allow it and look at it, think about it and allow it to sink. All right, and if you could go back to what the Toastmasters brand embodies, then you will see it reflected in this standard, the standards that we want to maintain one consistent Toastmasters identity, whichever culture we are in, whichever location we are in, whichever room we are in, there's something that is consistent about the Toastmasters brand, how we represent ourselves, 
our leadership image, the words we use, the things we say, how we say them, how we write, how we present, has a consistent way about it, has an accurate symbolism. All right, very important. And so there are some color palettes that Toastmasters has come up with, and they are the primary colors. What are the primary colors generally, generally? Can you put those in the chat for me? What are the primary colors? We grew up in when we got our basic primary preparatory training, education. What are the primary colors? Red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, blue, missing something. Gray. I'm talking generally, you know. Ah, okay. Red, yellow, blue. Gray. What, which one? Green. Beautiful. Gray. Green, green. Red, yellow, blue. The those are the four primary colors that we have. And blue. No, 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 no. Those are not primary, the primary colors, right? Red house, green house, yellow house, blue house, green house. Yeah, I said green already. Yes. And what? which one of those now is not a primary color of Toastmasters? Green. Green. That's not a color that Toastmaster used this. And there you have it there. The color, the color palette, it's a particular, what is it? True maroon, law, raw, law, loyal blue, and what's it? Shout for me. What gray? Cool gray. Cool gray. That's right. And guys, let it sink in. Those are our colors. Okay. So somebody reminded me that gray, that green is our secondary color. Thanks for the correction. It's a mixture of blue and another one. Lovely, thank you, you blue and yellow. Good. And then Toastmasters also has special fonts that it uses, Gotham and Myriad Pro. Ladies and gentlemen, it is said that you are to be the message that you bring. Here we are telling you about fonts and colors, branding and everything. We had to make sure when we reviewed our presentation that it reflected that too, the colors that we were using and the fonts. All right, so those are there and we will be sharing with you resources later. And those persons who had an opportunity to read over the manual would have noticed these things coming out, the color palette, the fonts and all of that. And Toastmaster Schmidt, I'd like you to add a little bit about color palette as it relates to like when you're doing your PowerPoint presentation, how you can set it up, set it up in the Toastmasters color palette, so you can just pull from it. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much, Shirley. Uh, we are, and I'll show this a bit later on how okay. to best get around this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out here is that the Gotham and the Myriad Pro fonts you may, depending on your computer and whatnot, you may have to pay for those separately. However, uh, Toastmasters, in recognizing this, they also advise uh, on some free fonts that you can use uh, and access freely. That would be the Montserrat, which would be replace Gotham, and the Source Sans Pro font that would replace the Myriad Pro. Uh, two things, uh, something else that we wanted to point out here is that the Montserrat font is used for headings and titles. Uh, imagine on a website, you would have the main major title, uh, home, about us, etc., all outlined in, uh, all using the Gotham font. However, the text in the body of the font, uh, sorry, in the body of the letter, in the body of the page, would then be in Source Sans Pro font. Yeah, uh, just to make a difference again, if you're using, if you're creating a flyer, and again, we'll get into this when we're doing the, the, the challenge. Uh, when you're doing your title of your event, that title of the event, for example, today, the title of the event is Branding Workshop. That would then be in Gotham font or Montserrat. Uh, and then the details, the time, place, uh, Zoom link, uh, Zoom numbers, and those type of smaller details, text about the event, et cetera, would all be then in Source 
sense. Pro. Uh, and then in the in the just we'll we'll add again a while we're doing the challenge. Uh, I'll show as well how to get how to set up your PowerPoint and your Canva uh, in such a way so that you'll be able to easily select the right colors. All right, thank you so much. And uh, those, those, these four brands are no one, two, three, five. Where are they found? Anybody knows? Anybody can, anybody has a Republic Bank in his or her country? Yes. yes. I in Antigua. Do we oh. have Antigua. Where else? Can, Barbados. 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 We have Antigua, Barbados. Where Trinidad else? and Tobago. Martin, Trinidad and Tobago. Good. So it's a popular brand in the region. Republic Bank. What about Najiko Insurance? In Aruba. In Aruba. Yeah. Saint and Martin. And Dominica Saint Martin. Saint Martin. Montserrat. Montserrat? Yes. Montserrat. Oh, lovely. Guys, I, anybody who knows me knows that I'm an educator and I just love learning. I'm learning so much, but we know that too. But I love it to know that there are so many other. What about First Caribbean, Jamaica, Barbados, Jamaica, Aruba, okay. Barbados, Turks and Caicos, Trinidad and Tobago. Wow, that sounds like Bar everywhere. Barbados, too. Saint Kitts, Saint Kitts, lovely. Barbados, lovely. Barbados. Barbados, very good. What about Sagicory Life Insurance Company? In a little shop. Barbados. Barbados. Dominica. Grenada. Grenada. Barbados. Yes. What about Cayman? Turks and Caicos. Nice. All right. Lovely. We're, we're doing good. And we have some top brands here in our region. Lovely. Sandals, Jamaica. Barbados. Yes, in the Caribbean, Barbados, <laughs> Barbados. Antigua. Antigua. Grenada, Grenada, lovely. Any no sandals in Trinidad? No. <laughs> what? All right. So, so we're going to be working on that. <laughs> lovely. Thank you so much. So those are our love brands. Okay. Now some don'ts and do's as it relates to the branding and how we manage the brand. And one of the first one is don't squish the logo or pictures. And so instead of not doing that, what you should do is resize by grabbing them by the corners. And usually I find that if you grab it at the tip of the left-hand corner in front of you, it kind of takes care of the rest. However, you, you might still have to do a little bit more resizing. So it's important not to squish the logo. I'm telling you, it's like it's painful for Toastmasters International when we do that. Use the right colors and logos. Don'ts and do's, continue. So here are the do's. Please do don'ts. Please do not use cartoons, illustration, or clip art in materials created for clubs. Areas, division, districts, and region. Use real pictures of real people. Of course, importantly, you must get the permission. And pictures of the Toastmasters meeting environment. You must get the permission. And therefore, as part of even the recording, where you, people get the option to say, listen, if you're going to be a part of this meeting, it's going to be recorded. The pictures would have been included. It means that they are granting permission for it to be used. However, Sometimes we have persons who are guests or do not really understand those things. And therefore in our Toastmasters meeting, training wherever we need to say it. Most times we're thinking that if you write something or if you say something without explaining, it's okay. No, let us take the time and say. And ladies, gentlemen, 
here is one of my pet peeves. If you know me, I know, you know this. Abbreviating the Toastmaster's name. You see that TM Damien, DTM Shirley? I am throwing out a challenge to you to have you go on the Toastmasters International website and look at what we get from world headquarters. And anybody who finds the, the TM before somebody's first name in any article, in anything, I'm asking you to let me know about it. It is surnames that are used. And because we have gotten so informal about Toastmasters, we have, got, we have taken it way to the extreme. For example, I saw a certificate and on it was TM Awards. Not Toastmasters, TM. And it's because we have become just so, so relaxed. And part of the branding is not that. That's not a part of the consistent message. So I'd like us to, as part of the takeaway today, not just to be inspired, but to re-evaluate the tools we use when we want to reflect the Toastmasters brand. And remember that this is an education organization and that there is, we have to remember time and place. Once you're in the Toastmasters environment, apart from when we are doing little socials and so on, when we are having events, occasion, it is a formal setting. So these abbreviations before words like this, TM Damien, DTM Shirley, DTM Awards, TM Training, TM Workshop, those are not a part of the high quality and the standard of Toastmasters. So as a district, and you can share with your fellow Toastmasters, I'm encouraging you to say, no, we are not to be doing it like that. And as I mentioned before, when referring to a member, use surnames. And to be honest and fair, it was when I was running for an international director that I became so much more aware of these things because I had to be interfacing at a high level in Toastmasters International. But now that we are all on the online platform and we are learning so much more early, you don't have to go to convention to get certain pieces of information. It's at our fingertip. I'm saying to us, let's encourage ourselves to change, to make the shift and embrace the high standards. Thank you. Do's video, the club's name or district's number should be placed below the logo, all right? So as you can see the example there, Curacao Sunset Toastmasters Club, District 81, Division I, 2020. Hashtag 2020, I think that's what's there. All right, so when you're writing, club name or the district should be placed below the logo. Get permission from the persons in the video before you make it public. I know that there's a piece of software or app that is like persons, their video cameras are permanently on. But before you release any video, please get the person's permission. And of course, with the whole copyright, intellectual property rights now, you must add credits and copyright symbols. Even in speaking, I once hear somebody made, making a presentation and some, it is something that your grandmother said or would say, say that. As my grandmother would say or my mother, refer, give credit to the people in terms of the source of the information. Use other people's material only with permission. We can't overemphasize that and always add the disclaimer, all right? Yes, sir, we're gonna move quickly yes, now. <laughs> jump forward, I just want to point out that it's Cooper Coy Sunset Toastmaster Club. Okay, not curious, oh, Cooper Coy, no, no, no. thank you. You're gonna, make you, my club, you're gonna make my club kick me out. Um, <laughs> and then Sorry. down in the bottom, it's the, That's the, right, it's right in bold there, that yeah. underneath the logo. <laughs> and then under in the bottom, it's the um, copyright symbol with the year, uh, just so that identifies the year that the, the artwork in this case was made, uh, the video being the artwork, uh, and identifies who made the artwork, the year, and to let others know that it was, uh, it was uh, copyrighted, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Toastmaster Schmidt, I'm asking you to make a note of persons whose hands are raised 
And I'm go going to also ask them to remember because we are going to be taking your questions at the end. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for that. I'm sorry that we forgot to have said that at the start. Yeah. Just please hold all the questions until the end, just so that, uh, and we'll be able to jump back to the through the presentation. So that's not a problem. Yeah, hopefully I'd like to have all the questions at the end because usually the, the answers are answered later on uh, so that it just saves both parties time. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And this is my favorite, proof read. I took this from a Toastmasters document. I don't remember which one I was, was doing. I, oh, let me just let the puss out of the bag now. I was, I think that's where I got this from. Yes, I am preparing to do a speech in my club and it is called using, using presentation software. And uh, as I got all the ideas together as to how you prepare to present, this was one of the things. And I just took it out and put it in our presentation because this is something we hate doing. Many people do not like to proofread. And as an education organization, we have to get into the habit of doing it because we are also influencers. Media, the media is an influencer. When persons want to get something correct and accurate, they say, well, let me see how it is stated in the media because they expect that that is going to be accurate see ourselves as part of the media okay now take time to proof read your work double check for spelling and other grammatical errors in every line of text every single line as i always say just take your finger and run across it pay special attention to headlines where it is easy to overlook errors and yes that that autocorrect might not be on or your finger touch the e instead of the i that's that's fine we are not infallible and here's another way if a friend or colleague is available who you know will pay that extra attention consider asking he her or he to review he or she to review your slides for grammar spelling and punctuation and ladies and gentlemen, this is very important because we are in Toastmasters International where several languages are spoken. And sometimes when translation is even done from the original document, we do not get the, the phrase correctly. And therefore take the time to have it checked. You'll be respected for that as well as it will show your respect for other people because you want to correct communicate correct information. Don't take this time. Proofreading is important, important, important. Believe it or not, I get paid to edit documents. Seriously, I wish I had more time to do it so that I could get some more money. <laughs> truly, truly. All right. Thank you. And someone just put it, uh, posted in the chat, our CGD, uh, Melinda just posted in the chat that we could also use Grammarly software, which is a software, they have a website, grammarly.com, that helps persons to proofread. Uh, it basically, it's a upgraded version of autocorrect. It also takes, uh, considers the context of which you're speaking, et cetera. So that's also another tip that we can, uh, that we can share with you. Thank you very much for that, Madam CGD. Thank you too for pointing that out, yes. And that's just wonderful because many times I teach French and Spanish and many times the students, they don't want to, to think through how to say, let's say goodbye. And so they just go to Google, but guess what? If you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't know the context, it can carry you wide. So I'm happy that that so software takes into consideration the context of the word or phrase that you want. Let's take heed. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back in here now. Thank you very much for that section, Shirley. We are at 5.05 .05 roughly yes. uh, on my clock. We're keeping a sharp eye on the time. We're gonna take a moment to jump into some Feed, flyer feedbacks. So these are some flyers that I collected throughout the Toastmaster year last year. Uh, and again, we'll be reviewing some of these flyers. I'm going to be asking you for your feedback. So to pre so prepare to have your 
fingers ready to type or your mute fingers ready to unmute. Uh, again, I want to point out here that it's no, in no means pointing a finger at any specific person or club, but it's really just so that we can, in a safe environment, in a safe space, uh, be able to use these ex examples as learning points. I can also sh share that some of these flyers were even learning points for myself with my years of experience in branding and marketing. So it's for everybody to be able to learn and it doesn't single out or discriminate, uh, discriminate on any one person or club. Uh, if you happen to have made some of these flyers, just feel free that you're able to get some free constructive feedback on your flyers. So first of all, we're gonna consider these two flyers. Uh, there's one on the left, one on the right. Um, the one on the left, can anyone share some of the feedback based on the context, uh, based on the text from the brand manual? Uh, can anyone share their feedback uh, on how this could be a better flyer or if it's brand compliant or not? Uh, Toastmaster, Alicia, her raise your hand. Yes, yes, her hand is up. Um, the, you were starting with the one on the left, right? Yes. Okay, I, one of the things is that the Toastmasters logo should be in the middle, I believe. And the colors are correct. And may, may, not, may not be the correct font. That's good, that's good. Anybody else? Thank you very much for that, uh, AD Alicia. Uh, I see three other persons with their hand raised. Let me see. I'm, I'm, uh, I see Toastmaster Carl, Henry. Yes, can you hear me? Very yes, well? go ahead. Um, I don't know, from a very amateur perspective, I would say maybe there are too many colors in the um, single flyer. And sometimes okay. I had a question related to this. Sometimes I think it's really um, a bit confusing to have many colors in the same flyer. You can do this, but I think sometimes it can become a bit broad. And it, it's really important that we take this into consideration when we um, propose something like this to ensure that the aesthetic is seen and people just can feel that they are attracted by this. That's a good point. That's a good point. Thank you very much for that call. I see Stephen, Toastmaster Stephen. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm on the colors as well. They are using the correct colors on the flyer. However, the way in which they're being used is incorrect, at least according to the brand guidelines because it speaks to which colors are used as accent colors for example the yellow but we're seeing it being used in a dominant way throughout the flyer but in in terms of things that are consistent with the brand guideline the use of high quality images of the individuals where you can see their face and it is representing a professional standard that is done thank you very much for that Stephen. uh just a reminder to everyone else on the call please remember to rename yourselves with the your this your title uh, and then your area, uh, and then your name. So for example, AD, uh, 18, Marie Claude. Uh, thank you. And then I saw, I think it was Dwayne, Toastmaster Dwayne. Yes, Toastmaster, pleasant afternoon. I think I also noticed within the flyer on the left, the use of different fonts, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. which is consistent with the Toastmaster branding. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, so PRM. To, yes. Senior. There was also one more thing I know remembered. Okay. Sorry. I believe that the District 81 and Caribbean Toastmaster should be under the logo. That's a good point. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so you guys read some, definitely some great points. Uh, I won't go through all, but just kind of keeping it focused on this flyer specifically, uh, the use of, we mentioned a couple of things. We mentioned use of high, high uh, quality images that was uh, done. The use of the colors were consistent. I think it was Toastmaster Carl Henry mentioned that uh, if you should be using all the colors, personally, as a designer myself, outside of Toastmasters, I do web and graphic designs. Uh, and so as a, as a designer myself, sometimes depending on the design, 
of the uh, and your artistic uh, creativity and your artistic style, you may opt to not use all of the colors. Uh, and that's also fine, according to, to what I've seen so far. Uh, uh, so you're not, you won't get in trouble if you don't use all the colors. Uh, so that's also, uh, and that's also a way for you to be able to, to um, use some variety in your creativity. Uh, pertaining to the use of yellow as a dominant color, that is something that I'm still actually uh, uh, doing some research on myself. I already sent an uh, email to uh, the, the Toastmasters International to find that out specifically. Uh, so I'll leave, I'll, I won't give too much feedback on that. Uh, in this case, uh, it, it is safer to use the yellow as a highlight color indeed. Uh, then uh, for the rest, I think the design uh, using District 81 uh, under the logo, uh, in this case, from a design perspective, so not from a Toastmasters brand a manual perspective, but from a design perspective, this uh, still works because you're able to make full use of the top half or the top uh, quarter of the uh, graphic of the design. Okay, uh, looking at the time, I want to jump forward into the second flyer, uh, the second feedback flyer, and that's the flyer on the right hand side. I know that there's probably a lot of feedback on this one, so I'll use the raise hand function uh, and just, uh, I won't take all the comments, I'll just take a few because uh, I think this would probably be the easier one. Uh, let's start with uh, Toastmaster Melanie. Uh, Toastmaster Melanie, also remember to uh, adjust your name when you're finished, uh, rename yourself. Oh, will do. In this flyer, it's very hard, well, one, they should not be using green because green is not a Toastmaster color. And the, well, and the later blue as well. I mean, must be mindful that even though we can use black, we have to look at how the particular colors sit on top of another color. So Telecom Corporate Toastmasters Club, somewhere in the middle, corporate and Toastmasters get lost on top of the blue. So we must be mindful of how we stack the designs that we have to ensure that the information is not lost and there's always clarity. Thank you very much for that, Melanie. Very good feedback. Uh, let's jump down to A.D. Jillian. Hi, so what I've observed in addition to what A.D. Melanie would have already highlighted is also the Toastmasters tagline, where leaders are made, that should be capital capitalized, where leaders are made. In addition, the background blue, color that is used is not the correct blue in addition to the font in the the font type is very pretty but it does not go with Toastmasters guidelines very good feedback very good feedback and you so you're just to make that clear you're mentioning that the Toastmaster Toastmasters where leaders are made should be in all caps correct okay. that's what we were told in the last session I believe Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, Area Director Jillian. I, I'm, I personally never heard that one before, but I'll have to, you give me some homework my, myself. So I'll, uh, we're both learning this afternoon. Uh, sorry, uh, let's take one more person, uh, see with their hands up, uh, Area Director Gisette. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Yes, good evening, everyone. Yes, it is pronounced correctly. I see different fonts on the on the flyer. I I didn't I don't know if the all are the the, the fonts that is required for the Toastmasters uh, to, 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 that you that you required by the Toastmasters. So I see that the fonts and it's what I think it's I don't know if every if the fonts are correctly used. Yeah, that's good. I'm good with that. Understood. Thank you. for, And I uh, agree with that one as well. Uh, anybody else? One more person. Uh, I see Toastmaster Carl Henry again, uh, Division Director. Oh, I just um, was um, without uh, 
okay. wanting to do this, but okay. I think I, I give the lecture to someone else. Okay, thank you very much. I don't see any hand raised, so we'll jump forward with the next one. Well, we'll conclude with this one. Uh, indeed, the colors are off uh, and the fonts are off, uh, definitely. Some of these fonts I know from my head, so I can, without having to look, I can already tell that some of these, uh, that the fonts are off, the telecom, this, uh, the text on top uh, is not in compliance. The September, the date was not in compliance. The this text in blue here is not in compliance. I think it was uh, Toastmaster Melanie also mentioned that the blue, green, uh, and the blue background are also not Toastmaster colors. Um, something else I wanted to share here, one of the feedbacks that we got in the past was that uh, because it's, uh, if you leave the logo off of the flyer, then you can do what you want. What are, what, what are your feedbacks on that so far? Let me just throw this out in the, in the group. Anybody? If you leave the flyer off of the, uh, sorry, if you leave the logo off of the flyer, uh, you can do what you want in terms of design. Is that correct? No, it's not. No, because we must always use as Toastmaster and distinguished, well, distinguished Toastmaster, Shirley said, is about consistency of the brand. And the brand calls for using the logo or at not even if it's not the Toastmasters international logo, the Pathway logo, one of the logos that speak to the brand because that is what identifies and set the brand apart from any other educational program. Very excellent, very excellent. Uh, AD, uh, Melanie, it sounds like I need to have you in my team as well. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, Toastmaster PRM uh, from Division K, Stephen. Okay, good afternoon again. I'm agreeing with Eddie James. Even if you are going to use a logo or not, one of the things that you are intending to do with that flyer is to bring people towards the Toastmasters movement. And so even if the flyer isn't, the, the logo isn't physically there on the flyer, people are still going to attempt to make that association between the organization and the graphic. And you would in effect be misrepresenting the organization with or without the logo. So, Thank you very much for that one, Toastmaster uh, Stephen. So one of the, 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 one of the ways how I think about this, or I like to think about this, and to make it easier for persons who uh, are not necessarily familiar with marketing or branding, etc., is uh, imagine that uh, a friend of yours come to, come to you and they say, hey, um, Toastmaster Gisette, I just came across a flyer on my Facebook. Uh, I saw it yesterday, but I don't remember where. Uh, I don't remember on whose. Uh, and, and so you asked, GZ would ask, okay, can you tell me a bit about the flyer? Because then I can help you to look for it. Yeah, there was blue on it. There was green. There was uh, orange, etc. Uh, there's two things. GZ would either say for sure that that's not a Toastmaster logo or a Toastmaster event because uh, Toast, uh, because Toastmasters does not have orange or blue or green uh, in the design. So any no club should be using uh, those colors or Gisette will herself be embarrassed to find out that one of her colleagues in the district has been disrespecting the brand. That's, that's kind of a simple analogy on how I try to make, uh, make, bring the point across. As co for consistency and to make sure that we uh, all associate all of our Toastmasters event uh, with each other, uh, even though they are different club, different areas, et cetera, just to make sure that we maintain that brand compliance, maintain, maintain that identity, it's important that we uh, always maintain our compliance. Thank you very much so far. We'll jump over to a few more. Uh, any feedback on this flyer? Melanie, is your hand still up or your hands just went up? My hand was still up, but in looking at this poster, I was totally baffled because there was just the letters, I think Toastmasters International, a part of their branding was always ensuring that when we put 
words and paragraphs together, they must be in a readily, uh, easily read format. So better all across that arrow is unacceptable because you can't, I was trying to figure out. So I think they're saying creating a better me, but because it's not flowing in a particular proper direction, you, you, are, you may be unable to connect the dots there. And that is my, oh, and the white background and the logo is cutting through the blue line that is separating the, the creating A and the white portion that says better me. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. I'm seeing some of the same persons. I'm hoping to see some new faces, some new hands raised. So I'm going to skip over some of those who has a chance already. No disrespect, but just trying to make sure that everybody gets involved uh, and we maintain uh, some interaction. I saw a guest, Francesca. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. I think that arrow in and of itself as far as I know, not being an expert uh, is not something that is brand compliant. And the color of the arrow, that red, from my little knowledge. And then also the shadow of that arrow down underneath there. Those are all non-brand compliant issues. And then the size of the logo up there taking up, you know, pushed up in the corner with not enough space around it as far as I have been informed, seems to be all, those seem to be all no-no's as far as Toastmasters brand is concerned. Okay, thank you very much, thank you very much. Uh, and um, Francesca, are you a, a guest this afternoon or are you a Toastmasters also? I am a Toastmaster. Okay. I am not an area director or division director. I am a okay. VP uh, in my, of my club. Call Achievers Toastmasters Club in St. Vincent. Okay, okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to confirm, but thank you for being here as well and for contributing. I saw a new hand, uh, AD to, uh, Area Director Sheila from Area 38. Thank you very much. Well, the logo is in gray while the rest of the, the flyer is in color. There is a actually yellow is supposed to be an accent color while it's being used as a major color. The name of the Toastmaster Club, from what I understood just a moment ago, should be under the logo while it's on the site. And I'm not sure if it can be written in the position that it is. Understood. That would be for now my contribution yeah, and the clip art, which is the better with the arrow, there's a clip art. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to jump ahead. Indeed, I, I think we covered most of what was uh, said here already. Um, the uh, oh, I just want to also mention, uh, in giving your feedback, remember that we're in a safe environment, in a safe space, and a constructive uh, environment. So in, make sure to ensure your feedback is also constructive. Uh, so indeed, the better could have been better designed. The flow of the text from a design perspective, so as a designer, uh, I would have personally done this differently, but uh, in just referring to the brand and the brand manual, what we've learned from the brand manual so far, uh, it could have been better executed even though we're using some of the, uh, the elements, the black and white logo, uh, the fonts, I'm not 100% sure if the fonts are brand compliant, uh, but the arrow would also be considered clip art. Yeah, and I think the fonts for the Phillipsburg Toastmaster Club, I think that also I'll have to, I would have to confirm if those fonts are, uh, the compliant fonts. Let's jump over to this one. Um, I'm sorry, just to add, somebody wrote in the chat, Mr. Oh. PR, that they, that we should avoid using um, abbreviation. Uh -huh. And the, so they, somebody was saying that the name of the club was abbreviated. Oh, PTMC? Okay. Yes. 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 
Yes. Because remember, you're, it's going out to the public. They are not initiated to know that that's what it means. So remember, our audience is a broad audience. More so now that we are on the online platform, just say the full correct thing. Indeed, indeed. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for whoever posted that in the chat as well. Uh, any feedback on this other flyer? I uh, see some hands raised. I see Toastmaster uh, Area Director Alicia again. Yeah, I know I had a chance, but I just wanted to mention that we also have to be extremely careful when we are posting because we may post, we may have a post to repost and then realize that it has an error, but then it's already too late and it's already circulated. So just wanted to mention that fact. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Indeed. And so that's why it's important, as uh, the to senior Toastmaster <laughs> Shirley was saying, for us to ensure that we proofread uh, mm -hmm. the text, make sure you send the flyer to your president, if you're VPPR, uh, send it to your area director, if you're uh, uh, president, send it to your division director, if you're area director, etc just to make sure that you have an extra set of eyes uh, on this as well. What I tend to do is also to look for persons around me who are who have that meticulous eye, uh, who will be able to suggest, give great suggestions and ideas on how to adjust and move so that we get the best work possible. Yeah. Um, I see a Toastmaster Anthony. Uh, Toastmaster Anthony and everybody else, please remember to rename yourself with your distinction in front. Uh, and then you could go ahead with your feedback. All right, thank you. Good day, good day, everyone. For the second one, what I observe is the font. Mm -hmm. It is not brand compliant. And secondly, the logo, the logo seems to be too much in the edge. I believe that there is not enough breathing space on the logo. Very good feedback, Anthony. You sound like a designer yourself. Uh, I not really a designer, but I I do a lot in terms of Canva. Uh, okay. So yes, that's good. That's good. Thank you very much for that. Uh, anybody else in terms of feedback? I've, I'm gonna start to call out some names. I see Area Director Ruth Williams. Can you jump in with some feedback? I know Ruth has been using some uh, Canva herself lately, so I want to make sure get her involved as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, my, <clears throat> I would say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? <clears throat> I think these colors, they might have been brand compliant when this, flyer was made, but these colors are not brand compliant any longer. The yellow, definitely not. The type of red, definitely not. Also, the fonts that have been used are not brand compliant. For headers, we use, if I'm not mistaken, Montserrat. And for plain text, you use Sun City, something like that. And then the logo, <clears throat> I see it's in the left upper corner. That is in itself, it's okay. Maybe it's too close to the edges, but it's placed the way it's supposed to be or supposed to be. I actually have, I actually have a, a question for you on that PRM, Damien, because I have seen other branded material of Toastmasters where the logo is placed pretty much just about in every corner, front, center, bottom, and these are on branded materials of Toastmasters. So, but I, I prefer it to be up in the left-hand corner. <clears throat> So, and the blue is definitely not the blue that we use in Toastmasters. If you would have this on Canva, you will have all of the colors of Toastmasters lined up right there and you just get to click and you get all of the compliant colors that are allowed on a flyer. 
So that's my input. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Ruth. I appreciate your feedback. Uh, so thank you everyone for giving the feedback on this. And indeed, uh, the background color is definitely not in compliance. Uh, I do like the fact that we use, uh, I wouldn't say high quality pictures, but pictures where we can see actual Toastmasters. Uh, some of the layout of the flyer, the layout could definitely have been uh, improved. Uh, we all mentioned already the fonts are off, the colors are off, uh, etc. So none of the points in the brand manual uh, were upheld. Uh, in terms of layout and, and, and design, uh, design is, comes down to a personal preference ultimately. Uh, and so it's always difficult to kind of give uh, constructive feedback on uh, a, a flyer that is compliant but poorly designed uh, because that kind of comes down to, again, personal preference uh, to a certain extent. But to ensure that we're at least in compliant with Toastmasters, it's important that we stick to the brand manual, use the fonts, use the colors, uh, use the um, uh, taglines, use the logos, etc., in the correct format. Jumping ahead, I want to get to flyers for a special occasion. Uh, I know it's always difficult for us to create flyers for special occasions, and these special occasions could be uh, international special occasions, think of Christmas. Uh, New Year's, I think of breast cancer awareness, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's always difficult for us to create uh, flyers. One of the things that we have here, I want to take a moment to get feedback on this flyer as well uh, as one of the last ones. Anybody else to raise their hands? Feel free. I see one hand raised, uh, Toastmaster Dwayne. Yes, Toastmaster, pleasant afternoon once more. <clears throat> well, the obvious, um, the obvious flaws of this particular flyer, as I'm seeing it partially, is that the color schemes are off. These are not the standard colors for Toastmasters. Also looking at the fonts that were utilized, those fonts are off. I'm not able, okay, I'm now, I'm making the adjustment and okay, there's no Toastmaster logo, even though it's geared towards cancer awareness. There's no brand identity with Toastmasters anywhere in this flyer. That's my contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Rain and Doreen, sorry. And then we have Area Director Sheila. She Sheila. Thank you, PRM. Initially, when I looked at it, I wasn't sure if this is a flyer from Toastmasters, but then I realized there is a club number under it. I recognize it as a club number, but if it went public, the number says nothing. Um, the clip art can be offensive to some. It doesn't have to be, but I understand it's about the, um, the message that, that wants to be communicated. The colors were mentioned already. I just saw after an adjustment was made on the screen that there is a, I see a small piece of a logo which I'm not sure if that's part of the, the flyer. Initially, I didn't see it as a flyer from a Toastmaster club. Thank you very much, Sheila. I appreciate that feedback as well. Uh, and indeed, uh, I didn't see any logo on the flyer. Um, the fonts we mentioned already, what I want to mention here, well, I think what's important is the, and that's why I started off with this question, how do we bring, um, how do we highlight special occasions? Again, Christmas, in this case, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, how do we bring 
the sentiments of that special meeting, that special event to a flyer in this case, but still stay on brand. Uh, and so one of the ways that uh, we went ahead and did that at my club, uh, this, for example, is a flyer for a special meeting. This was uh, St. Martin's Day in uh, last year. Uh, and so, for example, uh, we use a picture, a actual picture of uh, St. Martin in, I think, the 80s or 70s, if I'm not mistaken, as the background. Uh, and then we were able to superimpose the title with all the details on the top. This kind of gives highlight to that special occasion. So in this case, if you, especially if you're from St. Martin, you already know, uh, recognize this iconic picture. Uh, the texts are all there, the fonts are all there, uh, et cetera. Uh, in speaking to Toastmasters International, especially about this issue in terms of um, special occasions, one of the points that they provided uh, uh, one of the feedback points that they gave was to make sure that we use the brand fonts and colors uh, and maintain that as much as possible. Uh, personally, from a brand perspective, this is not something that they mentioned, but from a brand perspective, uh, if it's a special occasion, you may be able to get some leeway for the title of the event. So in this case, for example, uh, St. Martin Stories, uh, maybe this was Christmas or whatever it is, this, the title uh, and exclusively the title, uh, you may be able to get away with it, not to say that it's compliant, I want to be clear, uh, but you may be able to get away with the title um, being in a different font if that font is uh, contributing to the general gist of the event. In this case, for example, we're thinking Christmas, um, you may be able to get away with that. Of course, that's not the answer. Uh, and we try to stay again on brand with the fonts and colors as much as possible. Um, another great thing that I noticed this year is that Toastmasters provided brand templates for the flyers. So you're able to go online, uh, download brand flyer templates to be able to use for all of your events. Yeah. Um, I saw your hand, Shirley. Uh, you wanted to share something? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Just wanted to add, I saw Toastmaster Gordon, Division Director, mentioning that, just what you said, that there are event templates or events, brochure or clips that can be used that are provided by Toastmasters International. I also wanted to add that there comes a time when you know that less is more. So, for example, Toastmaster Francesca Anu, she mentioned that, and other persons too, that sometimes a flyer can be offensive to other people. And again, remember your audience, once you have something that you even feel uncomfortable about, and you have to be explaining it away in your own head and say, but this is what I want to convey. You have to be convinced, convincing yourself. I think we should just walk away. And once you're doing something under the umbrella of Toastmasters, Yes, you want it to be attractive and all of that, but we still need to adhere to the guidelines and let us not go to the other extreme. Remember the broad audience and the context of what we are doing and we are falling under a particular organization. Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much for that, Shirley. Uh, one of the last flyer feedbacks we wanted to share, uh, this was uh, two events from last year. So one was Thanksgiving, uh, and one was for Christmas. Uh, and so you see that we're able to conjure up those emotions and feelings of the season, of the reason for the event, for the club meeting in this case, but still is remaining in compliance. So all of the funds are in compliance uh, on both flyers, et cetera. So those are, this is another simple way how you can, again, remain compliant as much as possible, uh, not changing the fonts, not changing the text, uh, even though it's Christmas, uh, but still remaining in compliance. Yeah. At this point, we're gonna jump over to the 
Uh, looking at the time, Shirley, I want to jump over for us, jump over to the uh, challenge. And the challenge this afternoon uh, is to make sure we create a flyer for an event. Uh, and the challenge is to make that in 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to fire up my Canva. Uh, one, more when we, um, one more when Toastmaster, Schmidt. Yeah. Just to just remind us, this is a big one. You're going, we're going to go over to doing the practical challenge, but this is a big one. And I'd like us here on the platform, as part of our takeaway today, to make sure that when we are doing presentations, club, area, division, district, wherever you're doing a Toastmasters presentation to use the PowerPoint template. Many persons, they have their presentations already and they probably want to use it for some, any form of training. And that is going to be one of the roles that I'll be performing on, on your committee, wherever I see where presentations are being made and PowerPoint templates from Toastmasters International are not used, we're going to call you out. Indeed. Indeed, thank you very much. Uh, and I'm glad to have uh, uh, Shirley on my team as well to be able to assist with that as much as possible. So the challenge is in 10 minutes, we're gonna create a flyer. Uh, I'm just gonna get king, things kicked off. Uh, some I need assistance. I need someone to be able to kind of share with me some of the, uh, share with me what the flyer should be about. So this is unplanned. Uh, so we're gonna create a flyer uh, in 10 minutes. You can put it in the chat in the chat, or unmute and share. What should the flyer be about? Uh, anybody? Club officer training. Club officer training, very good one. Uh, let's go here. So I opened up my Canva and I opened up a flyer. I'm gonna create a flyer um, and I'm gonna look here on my left in Canva. If you've used Canva before, you're familiar with this screen. I want to search for a training or workshop with no particular idea in mind. I see this right away. I kind of like this design, so I'm gonna jump with this. It's- If you're excited, raise your hands. Put your hands in the chat. If you're raising, aren't you excited to see this, man? Okay, so this is one I have to pay for, so I can't use this again. Uh, let's use a filter. I'm gonna choose, uh, let's Thank see you, <laughs> Another one that I like that we can use. Uh, surely make sure to, that I'm staying on time. Eh? Yes, working on that. So let's say we have this one. We could work with something like this. Uh, I actually saw a brand uh, COT training with the pictures, uh, with a nice big picture in the background the other day. I think that was from one of the divisions or areas, uh, but that picture was using some uh, a picture from a city high, uh, uh, sky rise, uh, and that was not a toast. Uh, that would that flyer was also not compliant, also because the picture had nothing to do with a toastmasters uh, setting. In this case, we're gonna. This is the template we're gonna use. One of the first things that we have to change is the font. So we're gonna jump over here uh, and make sure we go to where is it? Yeah. So make sure we go here. Uh, for title, we're going to go to Montserrat. Uh, so this one, we're going to change to Source Sans Pro. These are some of the things that I selected already. So that's why they are that I use on a regular, actually. So that's why they are uh, so close at hand. I'm changing up this. Boom. What I'm gonna do, a, a quick tip, especially in Canva, if you drag in your Toastmaster logo, there we go, and bring it in from early. Uh, I'll just place that here for now. 
we'll be able to, and it's, it won't be perfect, of course. Uh, what's your, uh, who was the person that mentioned club officer training? It was me. Uh, what area division are you in? Director, F, division Director F, Sandra. Uh, what, what area are you in? Uh, area 29. Let's go with Area 29. Uh, there we go. We're going to make this bowl. Uh, and now we have to start to look at the colors that we're using. So I want to be able to get this here. Uh, some persons would want to have the area under the flyer, uh, sorry, under the logo. Um, one of the main things I want to mention here is that as the, only the district, only the district is allowed to have the district uh, on the top half of the flyer. If you're not a district uh, and you do want to, in this case, you're in area 29 and you want to mention that you're in district 81, that's okay, but then you would prefer to have you have District 81 down in the bottom of the flyer. Yeah. So I'm going to change this to red, change the text here to white. There we go. I'm going to change this text here as well. But let me first change the background. For me to change the background, I go to, uh, we can use a generic background, one of these, but then I have to look for a good color. Uh, what I like to do actually is go in more and search for pixels. When I get pixels, then I search for a nice uh, workshop flyer, uh, sorry, workshop picture, where we see persons are, uh, if I see something I like, I use it. If not, uh, let's me search for something like meeting. So let's say I see this and I want to use that. We have that nicely in the background. We can try to blur it out some more. There we go. How am I looking for time? I got three more minutes. Yes, yes, yes. We can give you three more minutes. So we want to blur it out. So just so that it's clear that there's a meeting going on in the background, but not that it's taking up uh, any preference. Because we have the logo in on the artwork, we then have the colors. These colors are from the picture that we just dropped in the background. So in this case, let me try the red. No, the red is too dark. The blue is also too dark. So we go with white in this case. Uh, so here we can adjust the text, of course. It's too dark. So in this case, I would then use, uh, because of time, of course, the uh, challenge is 10 minutes, but because of time, I'll be able to use the yellow to ensure that we have the dates uh, and time and whatnot. And then you, of course, be able to add the Zoom ID, uh, ID 2349, uh, passcode, uh, challenge. There we go. Simple flyer in less than Don't 10 minutes. Don't forget the time zone. Sorry? Don't forget the time zone. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, that is indeed something that I had to learn recently. Uh, 9 a.m. AST. Thank you very much. Uh, and of course, you can go in and fill in all the different details. You can add some more details here in text, add some more details here in text. We could play around with uh, the fonts and the sizes, make this a little bigger. Yeah, so the flyer is well balanced. Uh, we may want to shift this text actually over to the right-hand side. There's different things that we can still do with it, for, but for within 10 minutes, how do you guys think I did? That was awesome, bro. Love awesome. it. Thank you. And clear. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Now, now, is this the free doing. version of Canva or this is the paid version of Canva? No, this is the free version of Canva. Nothing special. Um, 
Yeah, but I really just dragged in the, the Toastmaster logo uh, and that was about it. Yeah. Of course, you'll have to know a bit more about design for you to be able to know, to be able to do this in 10 minutes. But what I really like with Canva is that you are able to go in and find pictures for free. You're able to add text for free. You get ideas on different templates that we can use uh, just for context, this is, remember, this is what we started out with, uh, and this is what we ended up with, yeah? Um, so I wanted to highlight this here just to make sure that we are able to provide you with uh, good background uh, on what you can do in Canva and how easy it is in Canva. In, photo, in uh, PowerPoint, it's pretty much the same. Um, but I think because of time, we'll be able to maybe handle that in a second uh, in a second session. But for Canva, I wanted to make sure that we show how easy it is to be able to use. Sorry, how easy it is to be able to use our be brand compliant, uh, create a nice design, uh, and still make sure that we're creative and have. Uh, you know, be able to conjure up those creative emotions that we wanted to, 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 to share. Uh, at this point, Shirley, if that's okay with you, I want to open the floor for questions since we have about 10 more minutes. I hope we don't have too much questions, uh, but I want to open up the floor for questions in case anyone has. Uh, feel free to if we're gonna you if we're gonna ask questions, do feel free to raise your hand so that we have a better uh, overview on all the questions. Uh, let's start off with the somebody we have not heard from at all who yes. had a question from the start. I believe Lawrence, Toastmaster yes. Lawrence. Yes. Please go yes. ahead, Era Director yes. Lawrence. No VPR Lawrence. Yeah, VPP. Oh, yeah, sorry. So my question is about the color palette. Uh -huh. are, we, are we allowed to use a gradient which it varies the, the shade? Uh, short answer is that's a good question. That's a good point. Personally, as a designer, I don't really like to use gradients, uh, but I did notice that Toastmaster does allow it to the point where it is also in the brand manual this year. If I'm not mistaken, they also have some of the flyer templates with gradients as well. Uh, so you'll be, when you see the brand manual and you download the brand manual, then you'll be able to see those are in there as well. Uh, of course, you have Curtis to make sure answer. that the gradients are in line if with you are the off for a little, you're off a little, Toastmaster Street. Oh, sorry. Um, what was the last thing you heard? You could start over. The gradient. Oh. Okay, sorry. I was saying uh, that most of the time, I, as a designer, I don't really like to use gradients, uh, but I did notice that in the brand manual for this year, that mean that you didn't read the brand manual, uh, the, in the brand manual for this year that they do have uh, uh, guidelines on how to use gradients. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it's actually also in some of the flyer templates that they have. Noted, thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's go with some of the others that have their hand raised. I'm going to jump first to Karen since I didn't hear from her as yet, uh, and then I'll come back to the others. Uh, Division Director uh, Karen, or oh, Area Director, sorry, Karen. Oh, hi, good evening. I'm not an Area Director. I'm, I'm, that's just the area I'm from. Okay. PP, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. so my question has to do with the font size on a flyer. Uh -huh. Is there a guide? line because I noticed the brand the, the brand manual did not speak to so specific sizes and it seems to be subjective at times. What is the correct size for headings exact, um, in particular? That's a very good question. Uh, the rule of thumb is uh, and this is more from a design perspective the rule of thumb is uh, this is, you, you see my screen still? Karen? It has on the club officer training. Yes. So the rule of thumb is you're supposed to be able to scale this down, right? And still be able to read the title. 
So from a distance, you still should be able to read the title. That's a rule of thumb. And then when you zoom in, uh, always zooms a little too far. When you zoom in, you should be able to see the flyer in full. And from a distance, you should still be able to read the details. So actually, uh, in this case, these texts, uh, this text in the bottom here would uh, then, I would make them a little bigger. So there's no, there wouldn't be any, you probably wouldn't find any guideline on the font size because that comes down to a design perspective, uh, right. design in, input, uh, but I would be able to adjust something like this. Of course, because this is, uh, so um, think of it in terms of the hierarchy. I always forget how to say that word in, in English, but <laughs> with the hierarchy of information, the presenter, is on top, Toastmasters, Toastmaster Area 29. That's, in this case, a secondary information. The main information that you want to let people know that, hey, there's a club officer training. And so that information should be the biggest thing on your flyer in this case, because the that's because it's the title of the event. When you look at party flyers and whatnot, it's the same thing, the, the name of the flyer should be the biggest thing or the title of the event should be the biggest thing on the flyer and then all other information can be secondary depending on uh, their information uh, just to make sure that you're able to see it from a distance without having to squint too much uh, and then third tertiary information for example would then be able to uh, would then be the shot the smallest thing on the on the flyer uh, that answers yeah, your question okay yeah. just I'm sorry. Okay, no, I was just uh, clarifying for a non-event. Uh, let's say, for example, the name of the club, that, that might be the main heading in, in this case. Um, the same thing would apply. Uh, no, your name of your club would always be secondary in this case um, it, it, for a club officer training or the name of the area okay. that's organizing would still be secondary. The main thing okay. that you want uh, persons to remember is the title of the event. So that would be um, that would be the title. Uh, so that would be the biggest. Everything okay, else would, would then be mm -hmm. second or third, depending on um, what the event is about. Okay, I was speaking for a non-event, like for a typical meeting, advertising on a typical meeting. Um, yeah, so your typical meeting is an event. You want people to remember that, hey, uh, this is our, uh, you know, next week we have our upcoming meeting uh, and, right. you know, you want to um, highlight the, the title of the meeting. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, or okay. the, 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 what's special about this meeting? That's what you kind of want persons to remember. Okay, understood, yeah? thank you. So that's what you try to keep as, as big as possible. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much for that, Karen. Uh, I see we have uh, Toastmaster Ruth had her hand up a while. I just have a small question regarding the logo. It's uh -huh. seen many times in the left, in the upper left corner, but okay. I have seen many training manuals where the logo is actually at the bottom in the right hand corner. So I'm kind of confused. Is that, uh, this is a guideline for flyers and then there's a other guideline for training materials as to where to place the logo? How would I be? So uh, that's a good question. From my best knowledge, uh, and so you're, you're kind of giving me some homework uh, today too. So this is, I think the second piece of homework, I have to double check the use of yellow and now the use of the logo in location. Uh, from my best knowledge so far, uh, there's no necessary, no, there's no direct guideline from Toastmasters International on where to place the logo. But uh, because this is a Toastmasters event, uh, and this is a specifically a club officers training, or even in this case, a regular weekly meeting, the Toastmaster logo should still be one of the most prominent things on the, on the flyer besides the um, besides the title, yeah? Uh, the location of it, uh, and because of that, for me, the location should be to the top, unless it's, um, 
let's say uh, I don't know. Um, let's say it's a secondary page. So let's say we were, we were creating a secondary page to this one with uh, maybe more details or whatever it is. In that case, I would make then the logo a bit less prominent because we already established that this is a Toastmasters event on the initial page. You catch where I'm coming from? So let's say this was a multi-page. This is a booklet that we were making, for example. Uh, in this case, even though uh, on the home, on the front page, we would have the Toastmaster very prominently uh, established, but then on the second, third, fourth page, we would have then the Toastmaster logo maybe small down in the bottom right or left. Uh, in that case, then we would um, diminish the presence of the logo, but in most other cases, especially if it's a one pager, uh, in this case, a flyer for a club officer training, then we would, you make sure to establish that it's a Toastmasters event. Answers the question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have, uh, we are now officially at six o'clock, so I but I do want to make sure that we answer all the other questions. Uh, just before we close, we have Sheila, the Wayne. Uh, Karen, is your hand still up? If not, please uh, remove. Uh, Francesca, and then G set. And those Air, are the last Air, director, Air director two from area two. She oh, apparently um, we see her hand in not raised but in the background. Yes. Oh um, okay. Yes, and him as well. Those are the last couple of questions and then we close. Uh Area Director Sheila. Thank you. My question was regarding logo also. Part of it has been answered already, and I understand that you have homework related to it. But as a quick take, the logo can be also in the middle and then the, either the area or the Toastmaster Club will be under the logo, not above it, unless it's district. Did I understand that correctly? Uh, well, I didn't say that, but <laughs> um, from a design <laughs> perspective, yes, I didn't see any Toastmaster logo, uh, to, sorry, Toastmaster guideline with um, you know, where to place the font exactly. But that's something, like I say, I'll follow up on. Um, it is good design practice from a from a graphic perspective. It is good practice to say, "Hey, this is a Toastmaster logo, and we have in the log the area under it." For example, that's good practice outside of Toastmasters. So that's something that I would bring into Toastmasters personally. Um, especially because, like I said, there's no I haven't seen any official guidelines on it. Uh, in terms of having the logo in the middle, uh, that is again, personal preference because there's there's no strong, clear guidelines on that. Yeah. Uh, so it really just comes down to, for me, uh, how do we go about creating the best design possible um, within this creative context? So again, we started off with uh, this flyer uh, we know we wanted to create a club officers training uh, and we had to have the logo on there. We have text already in a specific location, et cetera. Using this as a guideline, as a template, we kind of ended up with the logo on the left-hand side because uh, it kind of just felt better there. Another option would have been to place the logo uh, roughly so around about here uh, and then have the area director come down, the area information, for example, come down here. Uh, this also kind of works, just line these up properly. Uh, so this also kind of works, uh, but having this in the middle, there's no direct guideline on it, first of all. And secondly, in this, in this specific scenario, uh, the logo looks off. So we're either having it balanced on the left with the rest of this information, or we're having it, uh, sorry, or we're having it balanced, sorry or we have it balanced here, yeah? But that's more from a brand uh, graphic design perspective and not from a Toastmasters guideline perspective. I Understood. hope I answered the question. Yes, so the aesthetic also has something to do with it. Okay, exactly. thank you. Exactly, yeah? Thank and, you very And much. I believe that's the reason why we wouldn't see any strong guidelines from Toastmasters on this because it, that comes down more to aesthetics, just like with the size of the fonts. Yeah. 
Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much, Sheila. And then we go to VPE uh, Francesca of uh, Francesca. And then Gisette is our last. And then I think there was an AD, AD, uh, area director too, uh, area director from area two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Francesca it is. But I was wondering about the background or what's got kind of watermark thing that you put in the background that I found so appropriate for a club officer training. Um, are there any sort of direct rules? Like I saw somebody for their club officer training, they put like a building or city in the background. Uh, I don't know. Personally, I found it a little bit inappropriate for club officer training. Yeah, yeah. But are there any direct rules on that? Or is it just uh, just up to them? Uh, no. So the, the, there's clear guidelines in the brand manual for that specifically, where Toastmasters mentioned that all, uh, uh, in this case, we're talking specifically about flyers, but all flyers should maintain images that speak to the Toastmasters environment. Uh, so that could be pictures of a mic, for example, that has to do with speaking. The, in this case, it, it has to do with a training. So there could be uh, a, a picture with persons around a meeting. It kind of gives you that sentiment of being, uh, of, of being in uh, a, a training room, a training area, for example. The one with the building, that's something that I spoke about earlier as well. Uh, that was also my feedback on that particular flyer. Oh, sorry. Uh, that was my feedback on that particular flyer uh, for the same exact reason. The uh, pictures of buildings doesn't necessarily uh, say anything to the Toastmaster in, <coughs> sorry, environment. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't say, but I was one is that so that that it can be implied from the rule, the um, the brand manual then that, that that is really inappropriate. Yes, yes. So that officially that uh, well, not officially that flyer was then uh, would be considered non compliant from a Toastmasters perspective, from a design perspective, it looks good. Uh, and I like it, uh, but if they can just, and that's what one of my feedback to the, I don't remember who it was exactly, but that was one of my feedback uh, points there as well to the individual that um, if we could update the flyer, the picture in that background on that particular flyer, then the flyer would be considered uh, compliant. Yeah, but Toastmasters have a very clear guideline on those, on, on the use of pictures. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so, for example, if that if we wanted to put a, a picture here in the background of a nice beach, uh, since we're in, in District 81, uh, or you know, pictures of palm trees and whatnot, that would not be compliant because it doesn't speak to the Toastmasters um, Toastmasters uh, environment. However, I do want to mention that last. Uh, last Toastmaster year, we uh, in our club we actually organized a uh, Toastmasters meeting on the beach, uh, and so in that context, because it's a Toastmaster, uh, a special Toastmaster meeting on the beach, in that context, a picture of a beach setting would be uh, considered compliant because of the event. Yeah, not because it was a not because it was a Toastmaster um, uh, in a, re a typical Toastmaster environment with the mic and the lectern, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that was again in a, spe a, spe a special uh, situation. Um, and then we have one more question from Gisette, Area Director Gisette. Thank you. I want to ask if a club want to put their Club logo on the flyer. Where can the club <clears throat> logo um, um, put on appropriate on the flyer? Uh, if you the club wants to put the club logo on the yes. flyer, yes. Uh, when you say a club logo, what do you mean? Because some clubs have their own logos, and uh, sometimes they use the logos to send mail. If they send a letter, but they put the logo the toastmaster logo above and under it they put the club logo <clears throat> but i'm asking what is the appropriate way to put uh, <clears throat> the club lo um the club logo so 
uh, first, my first thought is that there should be no club with their own club logo, uh, unless it's a corporate definitely, club. Sir. Definitely, definitely. Unless no it's a no corporate club. club. Yeah, unless it's a corporate club that in this case, for example, one of the clubs that we have here in St. Martin is uh, Telem. Uh, that was the one of their flyers, uh, Telem Corporate Club. And it's, uh, uh, it's clear that that's a corporate club. In that case, they can use the company's logo and Toastmasters logo on the same flyer. Uh, but that's also in the brand manual. Those two logos would have to be on separate ends of the flyer. Um, so that you can find in the brand manual. But no club should have their own logo. Uh, I think the most they can have is the Toastmasters logo with their, uh, um, their name underneath. Uh, let's say for in this case, for example, like how we have Toastmasters Area 29 at most, but there should be no other club with their own logo. Uh, that is clear in the Toastmasters, uh, Toastmasters brand guidelines. Okay, so when you are sending a flyer of a letter, you don't have to put the club logo on it. If you have, in the past, you have a club logo and <clears throat> you have used it in the past, but right now you don't have to use the club logo anymore. Correct, correct. Uh, it's against the Toastmasters guidelines actually to have your own logo. Let me say it okay. like that. So you shouldn't even have it to, to want to use it, uh, if you understand what I mean. Uh, so okay. that's one. And number two, uh, it, only if it's, again, it, only if it's a corporate club where, you know, it's clear that the company, uh, you know, th this club belongs to the company or is associated with a particular company. In that case, yes, but that's in the brand guidelines as well on how you should create uh, those, uh, how you should use those flyers, uh, use uh, the two logos on the same, um, on the same flyer. I think that's uh, on, there's a, there's a special page in the brand manual for that, actually. Okay, yeah? okay. <clears throat> no problem. Okay, thank thank you, you very much, Gisette. Uh, and then we had uh, someone from area two, you said, Shirley? Yes. Yes, my name is Gisette Roch. I'm from area two. Uh -huh. And um, my question was already answered. Because okay. I wanted to ask if, if the letter, if, if the, it is better to put the location of the logo to the top at the right <laughs> side. But you answered it already. Okay, perfect. Okay. perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, I see here, I'm trying to keep up with the chat as well. Both ICAJ and Jesse Sear are corporate clubs and use the logos. Yeah, so if it's a corporate club, then you can use your company's logo with the Toastmasters logo. Uh, I just refer you back to the brand manual with that. Yeah, there's a clear guideline in the brand manual on how to be able to do that. Uh, with that, I think we come, oh, sorry, Karen, you had one more question? Yes, thank you, thank you. So my question is, the fact, okay, we have no unique logo for the club, but is there anything that we could use as a unique identifier? Um, let's say, for example, um, having a, having a, a club purpose or, uh, or tagline, something that uniquely identifies your club. Is there something that can be used? I like this question and I want to answer it on a few different levels. First of all, uh, think of it, uh, uh, think of McDonald's or Subway. You guys like McDonald's or Subway? Well, you shouldn't like McDonald's, but <laughs> yeah. uh, let's think of Subway then. Let's think of Subway. Let's go with a healthier option. Uh, <laughs> if we think of Subway, how would you feel if there's, you know, and anywhere you go in the world, you know Subway. Uh, if you're in St. Martin, you know Subway. If you're in Jamaica, you know Subway. If the, you're in the U.S., you know Subway. Uh, because of their one consistent logo, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you, if this subway from uh, close by me in the neighborhood starts to uh, deviate from that and create, you know, subway with uh, uh, special colors and whatnot, just to uh, highlight the fact that they are, you know, from St. Martin in this special neighborhood, uh, 
we will feel a type of way about that particular subway, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it will stand out, yes, but unfortunately, uh, we it wouldn't be, it wouldn't maintain the same brand worldwide. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be able to attach it because, oh, that's the special one or that's the separate one. Same thing with all the other uh, brands worldwide. Nike has okay. different headquarters all across the world. Uh, Google has different headquarters all across the world, uh, but they maintain that one logo that identifies them all. The only thing that really would identify them is, uh, you know, headquarters in or uh, Nike China, for example, or Nike mm -hmm. USA, whatever the case is. And so that's what I mentioned in that case, then we can do that similar situation here. In this case, right. for example, a club officer training, uh, we use the international uh, logo. So we associate ourselves automatically with a, with, a, um, with a international brand. And then we identify which one. So let's say, for example, uh, I traveled the other day and I went, I went to, to Paris uh, and I ate by McDonald's at the, I think it was McDonald's out of desperation. Uh, McDonald's at the, uh, I think it was one of the train stations. I don't remember any, anymore. Uh, okay. So I know that it's McDonald's maintains the same logo uh, and it's the, the exact location. So in this case, we can do, that would be the equivalent of, uh, this would be the equivalent of that. Um, in terms of using on your weekly flyers and stuff like or bi-weekly flyers, using a unique identifier, uh, as a matter of fact, that is not allowed by Toastmasters. The only identifier tagline that we're able to use is where leaders are made. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, Damian, um, just to say somebody, I think it was Toastmaster Garden, one of uh -huh. our division directors said that the cl each club has a number and that's what makes he, he the club unique. So you can put that on the flyer. Yes, <laughs> yes. So that would be the same, the, 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 Club number would be the same as the name, et cetera. Uh, you can right. use both. Uh, it's just the number doesn't, you know, most persons, especially for persons who are not in Toastmasters, they wouldn't understand what the number is. Right. So you can yeah. easily use the name, but both are fine uh, and both would be in compliance. Um, mm -hmm. So what I was mentioning also is that you, we're not even allowed to use a special tagline. Uh, even for the district, we were not able to use a special tagline for the year. Uh, at least okay. not in not in official communication. We could put it in an email, we could put it mm -hmm. in text, but we're not a, allowed to brand it as we mm -hmm. would want, which was also a learning point for me, actually. So there's a bunch of different things that um, I'm learning personally, uh, and mm -hmm. and and where we would think, hey, you know, this is uh, this we should be allowed to, uh, but mm -hmm. according to the brand manual uh, and Toastmasters guidelines, we're not. However, with that said, one of the things that I want to touch on is uh, this year, one of the ideas that we have for the PRM team is that we want to make sure that all clubs, uh, and we're working with, I think, uh, Toastmaster, our CGD, C, Club Growth Director, uh, Melinda, we just had a brief meeting on that uh, last week. Uh, one of the things that we'll touch on is we want to make sure that all our clubs are as, are, High, highlight their uniqueness as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so one of the things that we will touch on and one of the campaigns that we'll bring out, you'll hear more about it soon, is the My Club pitch. And uh, so the idea is that in one sentence, mm -hmm. in one, uh, one or two sentences, you should be able to identify what is the unique identifier to your club, uh, what, okay. what makes your club unique. So with okay. that is, uh, again, that's something that you'll hear more about. Uh, but that is also a way on uh, how we can, as clubs, try to identify ourselves. It's just that, unfortunately, we won't be able to do that in uh, some of the typical ways that we would think. We won't be able to create our own logo. We won't be able to create our own tagline, et cetera, um, at least not in a branded way. It's something that we could put in emails. It's something that, for example, you as an area director can remind others in your email signature, for example, or in all your emails, hey, you know, remember this year, uh, this is what we want to do. Uh, remember this year that, you know, we want to encourage you to uh, remember to run together, stay together, uh, run together, win together, uh, et cetera. But that's not something that we could put on a flyer 
uh, or put on a graphic and share as a district, for example. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm not an area director, PPPR, but thank you so much. Sure, no problem, no problem. Uh, see, one last question from Nadia, and then we'll wrap up and jump to the closing. Uh, we're a few minutes over already. Uh, Toastmaster Nadia Jules. Thank you. Very informative session. My question is related to the alliance with Toastmasters and Rotary in designing their flyers and everything else. How would you balance that since they have their own color scheme and their brand, their brand, their brand manual, and we have our brand manual? How would you make a, or design a flyer that is balanced between the two? the two organizations? Thank you. That's a very good question. Uh, and that's another one that's gonna be on my homework to-do list. So thank yes. you very much for that. Um, what I can share in the meantime though, is that depending on the situation, we have to look at it on a case by case basis for now. Um, one of the things that I can share is that I know on an international level, Toastmasters and Rotary, for example, are looking to see how they can work closer together. Uh, and I think branding and, and, and um, uh, brand materials and those type of things are gonna be one of those areas that they will have to definitely come to a, a, an agreement on or consensus with. Uh, that's one. Two, uh, it, on a case by case basis, um, you need to look at who would be the main project leader on that project, for example, Last year in my club as president, we did a project with one of the other local uh, Rotary clubs, uh, yeah, Rotary clubs here on St. Martin. And because they were the main project leaders, uh, we allowed them, well, not allowed, it was their project, we kind of just joined in with them. Uh, and so with, in that situation, they were the ones responsible for the flyers and everything. Uh, they were responsible for the branding and all of that. So, sorry, in that case, because they were the ones who were really pulling the project and dealing with the project, uh, then they were the ones responsible also for the branding. Uh, on the other hand, if it was a Toastmasters project uh, or area project, project and uh, Rotary was then assisting or helping or one of the sponsors or whatever it is, uh, then in that case, since it's our project, then we as Toastmasters would then maintain our branding as primary. Uh, that would kind of be the easy, the easy way around it. Hope was that, hope that answers your question, uh, Nadia. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, perfect. Perfect. So I want to jump over to the wrap up. We have been. Uh, I just want to share. There's the brand guidelines on how to use the logos. Uh, that was in since that question came up. Uh, this was the images and photography, so that's there, it's clear. I don't really want to spend too much time on the brand manual because that's something that you can always read on your own. Uh, there was something else about the, where is it? Uh, I think it was this one. Uh, on how to use the different logos next to each other. Uh, I think, I don't remember the name of the person again, but they asked about the gradient colors. That's also in the brand manual. Uh, even colors with transparencies, that's also in the brand manual, uh, especially for this year. You have to make sure that you get the one for this year. Uh, there was something else about uh, how to use the logo and uh, how to use the logo in special situations. Uh, I can, I'm not finding it now. Oh yeah, logos with corporate, uh, corporate club guidelines. Uh, and the gist of it is you have to make sure that you're using the logo, uh, your brand logo on the opposite sense, uh, end of the flyer to your Toastmaster logo. So in this case, if the, your brand logo is to the top left, the Toastmaster's logo is bottom left. If your brand logo is top left, your Toastmaster logo would be right top left. Uh, sorry, <laughs> top right. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, so that was the general gist of it. For the rest, again, all, all of this information, some of the information you could find in the brand manual, just wanted to be able to point those out. Uh, I also saw someone mention in the chat that uh, sometimes club create beautiful virtual backgrounds for meetings. Does the virtual backgrounds follow the same compliance as flyers? Yes, hard yes. Uh, they definitely would have to, because it's a Toastmasters event, you also have to ensure of the compliance. Uh, and uh, thank you, as AD Jillian mentioned, TI has downloadable backgrounds for virtual meetings. Uh, so you'll be able to find those there. Uh, what some clubs can do or may want to do is adjust those flyers to add maybe their club distinction, uh, sorry, their club uh, name, et cetera. Uh, that is allowed, but of course it would have to be still in compliance. Uh, we're running way over time. So Shirley, if you for allow me, I would jump over to um, the closing. Uh, I'll send out the, the PowerPoint presentation as well so that persons will be able to share uh, and join in that. So in summary, we spoke about the brand being a set of rules to stimulate emotions and trust. We spoke about um, and want to remind you to remember the love cue and why we want to bring the Toastmasters brand to life. That's because we want persons to be able to associate our brand with a international organization and make sure that our brand, our Toastmasters, our club are the place where persons go to uh, to develop their skills. We also want to bring the brand to life. We spoke about bringing the brand to life by using the colors, the funds, and upholding the rules. Uh, we spoke about bringing the brand to life uh, helps to maintain a consistent message. And no matter where you go in the rest of the world, we want to be able to feel at home. We want others to be able to feel at home. Uh, when they come to a Toastmasters club. Also in summary, we also spoke about special events, stay on brand as much as possible, uh, titles, fonts, colors, uh, and try to uh, use creative, but on brand ways for you to highlight the occasion. Uh, remember to review the brand manual and use the resources. Uh, we attach some resources in the presentation as well. Uh, also use the knowledge and information about the branding in all your communications. Uh, if you're AD, if you're division director, remember to share that information with your clubs, uh, with those who work with you as well. Proofread, remember to share your information with someone, have them on your team. Uh, make sure you have a meticulous person who goes through. It's not always easy and that person could be a bit rough at times, uh, but it helps to really ensure that we are uh, better, that we remain professional, and that we uh, tell our story how we want it to be shared. Uh, when in doubts, contact before you contact me, uh, contact your division directors. Uh, they may be able to solve the solution. They may remember some of the information. They may be able to share and guide you. Uh, and if your division director, feel free to contact me if you have any doubts. Uh, the email address is, of course, prm at caribbeantoastmasters.com. Uh, and I want to remind you to help us uh, remain with a high, uh, maintain a high level of brand compliance uh, this year uh, and in years to come. It speaks about you. It speaks about your legacy as a leader. It speaks about the legacy of the district to make sure that we're professional, that we're brand compliant, and that we do things how they're supposed to be done. Uh, one last slide when uh, I want to share in the chat uh, one of the things that you learned from this session that you'll be implementing in your club and area or division, club area or division. Uh, just share in the chat one of the things that you plan to implement. I saw, I see Nadia's posting some, I have gotten a few chair charges when I first started designing flyers, I think a brand officer might be central creative such as self Yeah, yeah, that's true. Somebody said always be checking the brand guidelines. Yes, yes, yes. Always check the brand guidelines. The document, I think we update it every year. There was the yes. one that came out in June, uh, June gone, definitely stay, uh, stay 
appeal to the brand guidelines. If I see something that comes up, I'll definitely be able to share it with you guys as well, uh, just to make sure that we all are brand compliant. One of the things that I really want to see as well is that all area directors, uh, division leaders, I need your help. Uh, make sure that there is a marketing component to the club officers trainings. Uh, and if not, I know some of the club officers trainings have started already. If not, please make sure to ensure, uh, please make sure that there is some sort of branding training uh, that goes along, uh, that, some sort of branding training that happens before the close of the year. Uh, and then if not uh, in the, your second series of club officer training, please make sure to ensure uh, that there's a branding element in there as well. So just remember uh, if you're, while we're continuing with the closing, just remember to post in the chat, one of the things that you're learned or one of the things that you're, you're taking away, one of the things that you plan to implement for your club area or division. Great brand awareness and compliance, proofreading before sending out materials, use a PowerPoint, the proper use of virtual backgrounds for Toastmasters virtual meeting events, to use the PowerPoint slides of TI as well as all branding recommendations, greater emphasis on the brand. Yes, at every level, you're going to be the police, the watchman in your <laughs> meetings. Guys, let's do this together. Always exactly. remember the brand manual is like your Bible. Always, yes, you're going to be your go-to. Please remember that. Yes, we are depending on you. Indeed. This year is going to be our brand year. Very lovely and informative session. Take away quite a number of point shares. Okay, Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Uh, and sorry for keeping you guys so late. I don't like long sessions myself, but this was uh, um, uh, hopefully a very informative session for you. Uh, just in closing, I want to make sure that we share some of the plans that we have highlighted uh, from the PRM's team. And these plans can still change, of course, so, so they're not set in stone. But I uh, wanted to make sure that we share these with you. Uh, so one of the ideas is that we are going to have a page on our website. I mentioned this in the chat already. Um, we're going to have a page on the website and in our social media pages uh, that mentions all of our flag days as a district. I think this is important. Uh, make sure that we have a, a, all areas, all regions, all uh, islands and territories are highlighted. Um, of course, the branding workshop that we did uh, today. We also want to start to promote the international convention that's upcoming in August, if I'm not mistaken. Shirley, yes. you remember the exact dates? Yes, the 23rd to the 28th, and people need to register now. I put it in the chat, and I'm, I'm encouraging you to do that. Please register, it's $25, and they, we are paying this year because they have the quality of the convention is going to be different from last year when there were new fights on the online platform. So please register. Yes. And this is a wonderful experience. And you're going to be looking with the eye as a PRM. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, Shirley. Uh, so remember to register. You'll hear more about that from us, uh, remembering to register for the international convention. I mentioned already in during the session the My Club pitch. Uh, that's something you'll hear more about, more details. Of course, we're celebrating the TI anniversary in October. Uh, we also, I want to mention this briefly here, but one of the things that's coming up, so I want you to prepare for this, is we're going to have a photo competition in District 81. A photo competition, more details about that will be provided. Uh, I have one of my great team members working on this, so I'm looking forward to that myself. Uh, we also gonna be revamping the website, uh, making some changes, revamping the website, making sure that it's easier to read on your mobiles uh, and friendlier for you to navigate. We're thinking about a video podcast of uh, a video slash podcast. This is another project where we're looking to see how we can collaborate with the club growth director on this and all the, some of the other uh, executive leaders as well. Uh, again, some of these plans are not set in stone. But you know, if uh, we just kind of wanted to highlight highlight you already, so that uh, when you see things happening, you're not uh, not surprised. Uh, we just also want to. One quickly, sorry, sorry. Just before you finish, I didn't want to miss it and for you to change the page. Sorry about that. You say the second thing you see TM branding workshop. 
Toastmaster Shreeti is going to be changed that to Toastmasters Branding Workshop because many of us know that TM can mean trademark. That's true. That's true. That's Thank you. Big, big problem. That's why we're so emphatic about that TM thing. Exactly. Very, very important. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you very much for that, Shirley. Uh, newsletters as well. We're looking at uh, how we can introduce those back. Uh, we'll also be starting the recruitment for district leaders that's later down in the year. Uh, and of course, the conference planning. These are some of the plans that we have up until January this year. Uh, of course, more to come. If you guys have ideas, feel free to reach out to me. Send me an email, prm at uh, caribbeantoastmasters.com, of course. Uh, and then you will be able to, uh, of course, uh, see how we can work in your plans and ideas in there as well. Um, with that said, we're also still looking for persons to join our team. Uh, we're still looking for a webmaster to be able to handle our website. So if you're interested in joining the PRM team for this year, feel free to reach out, send me an email, uh, send me a message on WhatsApp. That also works. I try to check my WhatsApp uh, consistently. So feel free to reach out. We also could definitely use graphic designers uh, if possible. So, you know, uh, and writers actually uh, for when we have to do press releases. So if you guys are interested in joining the PRM team or even being one of the project managers for some of these projects that we have, uh, for example, managing the newsletter, managing the podcast, et cetera, uh, feel free to reach out, send me an email. Uh, if you have persons in your district who are interested, who are creatives themselves and want uh, opportunity to express themselves uh, feel free to forward them to me, send them my contact so that uh, they can get in contact and see how we can continue to work together to uh, develop District 81 beyond its means. Uh, so that I want to leave with you. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to, oh, we did the question and answer already. I want to thank you so much for sticking around with us. Uh, I really sorry, appreciate sorry. it. I'm so sorry, sir. Just as you close out, remember the resources? Oh, yes. That Yes. yes, that slide with resources. Yes. Sorry we to have interrupted you, but just to no let problem. them see that. So one of the things that we have, and I'll send this, it, it's in the PowerPoint already, so I'll send this out uh, to you guys as well. Uh, feel free to visit the website on the Toastmasters website, uh, you, uh, Toastmasters International. You go to the resources page uh, and you look for brand portal. In the brand portal, you'll be able to find lots and lots and lots of information uh, lots of different resources, uh, the brand manual, of course, the brand photo contest, uh, information about uh, uh, templates, sorry, about stationaries, et cetera, et cetera, website templates, how to use different things. Uh, and I think, uh, as I mentioned this year, there's uh, flyer templates on there as well. There's even templates for how to write press releases. Uh, if you're new to PR, uh, to your PRM assistance position, or uh, sorry, the division directors, uh, if you're the PRM for the division, uh, feel free to visit these, inf these resources in case you have uh, any questions. There's lots of information on there. There's even photo release forms and I think a video release form, yeah, video release forms as well. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of these things you don't have to go and create or you don't have to, to worry about a, where am I gonna find this, that's all there. Uh, we even have anniversary news release templates. So there's lots of different resources. If there's something that you're looking for and you can't find it, feel free to go to the website. In the top right-hand corner, you see the search bar. Uh, go there and you'll be able to search for whatever other information that you need. So thank you very much for that, Shirley, for reminding me to jump over to the resources. Again, all of this will be in the PowerPoint presentation as well. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank my co-facilitator, distinguished Toastmaster Shirley Daly for being here with us this afternoon. Help me to give her a big round of applause, uh, big hands. Let's see the hands in the chat uh, and on the screens. Uh, and how do you guys think that she did? I'm seeing a lot of hearts awesome. in, the, in the chat room. Awesome, awesome. Thank okay, you thank much. you for the love, guys. Thank you so much. And to our public relations manager on the district, Toastmaster Damian Schmidt. Big, big job. Hats off to him. Yes, he knows his craft. 
thank you. It was my joy and pleasure, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as your PRM for the year, Toastmaster year 2021-2022, I thank you. I appreciate you being here, sticking around with us uh, 40 minutes after the uh, agreed time. Uh, but I trust and hope that you has an excellent uh, that you had a great time and had an excellent session. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Division Director Simone. Uh, and I hope that you take this information, go back to your uh, respective positions and titles and teams, uh, be able to share this information. Again, we'll be able to share the video as uh, soon as we get it up. Uh, and of course, uh, if you have questions, you know where to contact us. Uh, feel free to send us an email. If you have uh, persons in your area, in your team, in your division that you think can join the PRM position, uh, or join the PRM team and who would be a great contribution, feel free to send me their contacts, send them my contact so they'll be able to get in touch with me. I deeply appreciate you guys being here today, uh, especially for our first branding session. Of course, it won't be the last where we touch base in this, uh, in this format. But I want to thank you for uh, being here. Uh, and with that, I now consider the meeting closed. Before you close, sir, we also want to recognize that the trio from District 81, they had they were here for a while. So we want to place on records our appreciation that they took the time to have been here and to share, have shared in the session with us as well. Thank you, definitely. So definitely. The trio from definitely. District 81. Yeah. Uh, and please remember that, Katie in prayer and thought as they go yes. through this very challenging time. Yes. And remember, Haiti is a big part of District 81. Remember that. So let's Definitely. bear them up in prayer and offer help wherever we can. God bless Thank you, you guys. Thanks so Thank much you. again. Thank you very much. Uh, Shirley, any closing words before you leave? Those were they. <laughs> they have homework. <laughs> Anybody whose email signature has not yet been updated, because I believe everybody here has a leadership role, please check again in the manual, the brand manual, how to do your email signature. And let's start right there. Get those email signatures right on target and Indeed. branding. Bless Indeed. you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to touching base with you and working with you with this year. Uh, we appreciate you. And we look forward to seeing you again soon in a different setting.